misplaced priority, meeting personal needs. From the beginning of the creation of the human race, the Creator established the priority of man when He commanded man to focus on dominion over the earth. This mandate was one of kingdom rulership, management, stewardship, and governmental administration over planet earth. It is essential to note that there was no mention of working for survival or food but only for development and fulfillment. Priority was never a problem in the Garden of Eden. As long as Adam and Eve walked in full and open fellowship with God, their Creator, they had no worries because He provided for all their needs. Food, water, and other resources were abundant, and the perfectly temperate climate made clothing and shelter unnecessary. Daily interaction with God, peer useful work caring for the garden, and exercising dominion over the created order filled their lives with meaning and significance. The first family's priority was executing the ruling not pursuing resources. Mankind was preoccupied with living and life rather than making a living. In the beginning, man's priority was ruling things rather than pursuing things. Man's P provision for daily living was inherent in his relationship of obedience and cooperation with his Creator and the fulfillment of his plans for the earth. All of that changed when they lost their dominion through disobedience. Evicted from the garden and their fellowship with God broken, they had to pay attention to things they had once taken for granted, such as food, water, shelter, and even survival itself. It was this tragic event that initiated the change in priorities for all mankind and refocused his life on daily survival. This preoccupation with temporal things like food, clothing, covering, shelter, water, and other fundamental needs for life has consumed people to this day and was announced by the Creator as evidence of the penalty of a curse for man's disobedience and treason against the kingdom government of heaven. Note the words of the Creator when he addressed the family of man after the act of defiance. Cursed is the ground because of you, through painful toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground since from it you were taken, for dust you are and to dust, you will return, Genesis 3 17-19. This legacy of need was passed from generation to generation until it became, and remains, the consuming priority of mankind. Everything man does outside the kingdom of heaven is motivated by the drive to meet personal needs. This fact was clearly dead and documented through the work of Abraham Maslow, a 20th century behavioral scientist, and psychologist. As I pointed out in Kingdom Principles, the second book in this series, Dr. Maslow, after years of observation and study of human behavior, identified nine basic needs common to all people and cultures and arranged them according to priority and a hierarchy of needs. One food 2 water 3 clothes 4 housing 5 protection 6 security 7 preservation 8 self actualization 9 significance 1 maslow discovered that in every culture the driving priority was first to acquire the basic things necessary for survival, such as food, water, shelter, and protection from the elements and predators. Until these fundamental needs were secured and assured, nothing else mattered. Once basic survival was no longer an issue, more focus was given to the aesthetic needs of self-actualization and a feeling of significance. Essentially, Maslow was correct. His hierarchy of needs accurately identifies the progressive motivations that drive human culture. Man, in his never-ending struggle for survival and significance, and separated in spirit from the God who created him, invented religion as a vehicle in his attempt to end the lost kingdom state of rulership and control Earth's resources to meet his needs. A careful study of all forms of religion reveals that all religions are designed and built on the promise of meeting needs. Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, Judaism, Confucianism, Scientology, Baha'i, Christian Science, Spiritism, Animism, Humanism, you name it, they all, without exception, seek to draw followers by promising to make their lives better, improve their circumstances, give them some sense of control over their environment, and owe our answers to the questions of death and the afterlife. To this list we must add institutional Christianity, Christianity in its most rigid, regulated, ritualistic, 
legalistic, and stratied form, is a religion run and controlled by men. A second common characteristic of religion is that all religions are motivated by the pleasing of deity in order to secure basic needs, crops, weather, protection, preservation, etc. After man became separated from God because of his sin of disobedience, he began to fear that his needs would not be met. He felt all alone and that everything was up to him. So he began to worship gods of his own invention, man-made deities that were at best only the faintest shadow of the loving and provident God Adam and Eve knew in the Garden of Eden. This is why human history is so replete with gods, the sun god, moon god, rain god, ocean god, god of war, god of sex and fertility, god of the mountain, god of the valley, etc. A man invented religion as an eor to appease fearful and unknown deities into giving him what he needs for daily life. It was a way, hopefully, of manipulating nature and controlling one's destiny. Life was harsh, grim, and full of violence. The purpose of religion was to win the good favor of the gods by being good to them and doing them favors. Another common denominator is that all religions have as their primary focus the needs of the worshiper, not the needs of the worshiped. Religious people always serve and worship their gods with the ulterior motive of expecting or hoping for something good in return. Their prayers are self-centered, usually focused almost exclusively on personal needs and desires. No attention is given to the needs or desires of the deity beyond that which is necessary to appease it and persuade it to act on their behalf. In the religion of man, the purpose of the gods is to fix things. In all religions, therefore, religious priority and petitioning end. Prayer is for personal needs. Let's be honest. For most of us, 99% of our prayers deal with what we want from God, a new job, a new car, a new house, enough money not only to pay the bills but also to gratify our lust for things. How often do we spare a thought for what he wants? Religion is sell sh because all religion is driven by the priority of needs. The promise of meeting needs is the main reason people stay in a religion. Even when religion fails to deliver what it promises, its followers are reluctant to leave it because faith and tradition dies hard. If their religion fails to meet their expectations for this life, rather than leave, they will simply postpone their expectations for the afterlife, however, they understand it. There is no doubt that the chief priority of man is to meet his own needs. The question we need to ask is whether or not that is the correct priority for a man. By now we all should know that it is not. Mankind in general suffers from the dual dilemma of misplaced priority and misplaced faith.